All right, guys, gals, and everything in between. So Scream 6 is here, which is something I never thought I'd honestly say, because obviously with the passing of Wes Craven, uh, we got a Scream 5, which to me served as kind of like a bookend of like a tribute to Wes Craven. And, uh, well, now we have a Scream 6. So, yeah. Uh, Scream 6 stars Melissa Barrera, who has still not called me because, you know... Hey girl, unsuccessful YouTuber. Uh, you still can call me anytime you want, though. Please? Maybe? And also Jenna Ortega, which, hey girl. <laughs> wow. Damn. Please call me or slide into those DMs and be like, Hi, my standards are low. And I'll be like... <laughs> Anyways, back to my cool, professional reviewing absolutely professional. So anyways, after the whole Woodsboro ordeal, the crew, the original four as they're kind of calling themselves, go to Manhattan to kind of get away from it all and do their college life and really live as independent adults. And then the ghost face murders start happening again. And I'm just going to say it, this movie had balls. It had cojones. This is the easily the most brutal Scream film, in my opinion, and it is also one of the most intense. And you know what? In case you're worried about a rating and be like, but what is the rating, Scott? Spoilers right here. This is my second favorite Scream movie right out the gate, because I still think the first Scream is an all-time classic, and it's really hard to top an all-time classic. But in terms of enjoyability... Holy crap, I enjoyed the hell out of this. There were so many pulse-pounding, intense scenes. It's in the trailer. There's a scene with a ladder that they're having to cross from one apartment to the other. I was on the edge of my seat, literally gripping with this. I'm like, come on. Like, it was intense. You didn't know who was going to live or die. It was one of those truly classic, intense moments in a film. It was filmed exactly like Scream 5. Because I think the same filmmaking team returned for it, if I'm not mistaken. Um, with Scream films, I kind of keep uh, spoilers at arm's length. Kirby's back! Hayden Panettiere! And wow, she got Botox. Um, a, at first, I almost didn't recognize her. But Hayden Panettiere's back in this film as Kirby. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of this sort of reunion, but not really. This is really its own thing. This is them saying, okay, we gave the legacy characters time. Now let's see what the characters we created do on their own. And that was fantastic. I loved it. I actually think this film proved that not only can Scream exist without Wes Craven, Scream can exist without the original cast members. There are original cast members in this, but... It really isn't their movie. They are, at best, in the distance. And, of course, there was that drama that even I heard about, uh, about Scream, which Nev Campbell uh, was supposed to be in this film. She's not, uh, due to pay obligations. They tried to kind of undercut her, and, wow, that's a low move, because she would have been amazing in this movie. But the film works without her, and it's so well done. The convenience store scene, which is the intro of the trailer is stunningly good. The Again, that, that latter scene in the trailer that they show briefly, stunningly good. Uh, the, only, the only complaint I really have is um, the, the third act. Uh, there's a couple spots in it that I felt like it was a little underwhelming, like they could have done something different with either the villain or something like that. That is a very minor complaint, especially considering they pretty much borrowed the finale of my film, Holmes University 4, Origins of the Fall. Shameless plug to my movie that about 300 people have watched. Um, but it was almost beat for beat that. When I saw that, I went, no way they're going to do that. No. Oh, wow. They're doing my movie. Interesting. Um, you know, kind of give me some clout as a filmmaker. But this film... Scream 6 is fantastic. It is great through and through. Um, it's tense. It's, in my opinion, never really scary. But Scream never scared me. It was more about the tension and the whodunit and the mystery. I guessed wrong twice in the film of who the killers were. Um, but when they reveal the killer to you, it's pretty obvious who it is. 
Um, it's not a Grandmaster twist like a lot of people were hoping, uh, but it still works as a film, and when they explain the direction they went, it really works. So I love this film, and again, it's my second favorite in this very solid franchise. This is six movies in, and honestly, I... I don't think I have one I hate. I mean, Scream 3 isn't great. But when you can say that a movie's not great and that's the weakest in, like, in your franchise, that's not a bad thing. Also, where was it? Because I'm not far away from bribery. They gave me this cool Scream 6 poster, which I'm gonna get framed, and I'm gonna put it up because Scream is iconic, and this poster looks great because, you know, like how Jason takes Manhattan, Scream way better took Manhattan. And, uh, yeah, this film was awesome. I loved it. I'm gonna watch it again uh, after I get my review of 65, which should be out tomorrow. Um, through and through, solid time. Do not regret watching it. I will say that this film, while it's not a future classic, this is absolutely the highest tier of highest tier big screen worthy. And Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega, please call me or slide into those DMs because <laughs> you're pretty. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe. I got plenty more videos coming to you. Love you guys. Oh yeah, Jenna Ortega.